last year. And with me right now, I have Tan, Dani, Jessica, and Sashang from G21 Batch. So, hello everyone again. Thank you, Ankit. All right, Rajesh. Hi, hello, hi everyone. Uh, please call me Aura. Um, from G Twenty. Yes, I uh teach at Kasasad University in Bangkok in agricultural economics. Yeah. Uh, most of my work now is developing a network of researchers and also supervising students in uh, graduate programs. Uh, we have students and network partner uh, universities, every country in Southeast Asia. And one of the issues uh, that we work on now is food security, climate change, uh, you know, sort of like marginalized and vulnerable groups in certain selected countries. Uh, so happy to be here and join all of you. Thank you so much, Aura. Okay, Simon, aloha. Hello, hi everyone. I'm from G2. Um, I'm based in uh, Riyadh. I'm originally from Pakistan. Um, and uh, I've been working on um, trainings and development. My background is from HR, but recently I'm doing certifications in, coach in coaching. So yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, changes in the environment, both in Pakistan, because as you might know, there have been a lot of glaciers over there, which have been melting a lot, and we see a lot of uh, floods coming in. And even in Riyadh, recently it has been, like in Saudi Arabia, it has been raining a lot, which is quite un unusual in these months, because usually it rains um, in uh, January and February mostly, but yeah. So sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but yeah, I'm enjoying the city. <laughs> yeah, over here so far. So yeah, that's about me. Mahala, Mahala, Yes, Ariana. Hi. Hi guys. Hi. Hello. Um, where are you? And how's the weather in your area? What's happening? Are you in Singapore or somewhere yeah. else? Yeah, I'm in Singapore. It, I think all of us in Southeast Asia probably have been facing the heat the last few weeks. It's been really, really sticky and hmm. and hot. So just trying to cool down in my house. <laughs> same here <laughs> but it's beautiful outside other yeah. than the stickiness <laughs> yes. yeah the heat is incredible but thank you and also Ariana, Ariana and uh, Miss CG they just launched the affinity group perhaps oh, you yeah. can share something about that Ariana. yeah um so we're also also in our group is Urishini from another mm -hmm. one of us center programs but we just launched it Two weeks ago with the first session um, on creativity for change. So each session of the affinity group will cover different uh, topics on what we should be working towards in the future and coming up with different creative ideas through art, literature, music, totally different we explore together. So come join us for one of our sessions. They're fun and interactive and very intimate with the groups. So yeah, please join us <laughs> in the next session. Yeah, we have the uh, opportunity to join them. And I'm telling you, the drawings and the artwork that basically came out, came out of that is like amazing. I never thought that I could actually draw a ship uh, it's like in other things that you know any things that basically uh resemble the issues that the uh, you know oceans uh, face here uh pollution and what have you because it was instantly get your, your pens and papers out and you have to draw so <laughs> for those of you if that's if that's your thing create being very creative 
that's I strongly recommend that you join the affinity groups because uh, you'll definitely have lots of fun and also zero in on the issues uh, that they basically have for their for their affinity group session. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And Danny. Aloha, Danny. Where are you at the moment? Um, hi, um, I'm Danny. I'm G21, originally from Indonesia, but mm -hmm. currently I'm in Istanbul. Yeah, I'm working uh, for UNDP here yeah, with, in, in the area of a peace building. Yeah, nice yeah. to meet you. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, so which part of Indonesia are you from, Danny, originally? Oh, well, I'm originally from a small town. Uh, my hometown is called Malang. It's like East Java province, uh, so between Jakarta and Bali. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, now it's like here, and then the weather is quite um, probably not, um, it's quite uh, pleasant actually. It's around uh, 12 or uh, 15 uh, degrees yeah, Celsius. Yeah, 14. 14? Yeah, uh, 12 to 15. I oh, think. so it's cool. Yeah, yeah, a little bit yes. cooler, but yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Sana all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have this colloquial. I'm sorry. Yeah. There, there's this, uh, you know, a slang which, which goes sana all, you know, like if only it's the same for all. So anyway, I think we, we just welcomed in Rachada and Pornstein. Hi. Hi. Hello. Aloha. How are you? Uh, yeah. Where Achara are you? Otan. I will change the name. Uh, I'm mostly based in Bangkok, <laughs> but uh, currently I'm in Phnom Penh uh, for my work. So I work with the USAID um, based in Bangkok um, with the regional environment office and then climate change and climate risk uh, mitigation is one of the areas of work that we are looking at in our development assistance activity as well. So nice meeting you. I'm also I'm in G21 with Dani and Anki. Wow. Good. You're doing an amazing job, and Kate, thank you for basically rallying <laughs> your generation to join us. And we are also joined uh, by Daya. Aloha, Daya. How are you? Are you driving? <laughs> Aloha. Yes, I am uh, here. Uh, I'm going to keep it brief. Uh, this is uh, Daya. I'm uh, Dr. Well, and... Uh, Thank you for organizing this and it's so good to see so many people together after a very, very long time. So uh -huh. I think it's a great uh, experience and a great feeling. Thank you for yeah. uh, having me here. Yeah, Dr. Daya works in the humanitarian field and uh, we were very fortunate to have him as one of the speakers for the International Leadership Colloquium held uh, a couple of months back. Right. So thank you. Aloha, Daya. Aloha. Aloha. Yeah, I think, uh, okay, Shushank, are you able to put your audio on? Okay. Oh. Hi, Aloha. Oh, hello. Shushank, we see you. Aloha. Hi. Hi. Uh, hello, Aloha, everyone. Uh, Sushank here. Uh, I, my full name is Sushank Misra. I'm from G21. I'm based out of Yangon, uh, but it's actually from I'm from India. I am working with the UN Habitat in in, Yang, in Myanmar and managing climate change portfolio, disaster risk management, and also providing you know political support to the United Nations country team here in Myanmar as the deputy of the UN Habitat. Wow. Uh, to tell about the weather, I mean, as the whole Southeast Asia, South Asia, I mean, it's extremely hot uh, and just you know waiting for the rain. You know, hopefully it can arrive in the next two three weeks, and that will be the big relief from the from this question heat. Yeah, aloha, and thank you for joining us, Shashang. It's wonderful to Thanks. meet you. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's try to turn this down. Yumi, aloha, Yumi. Okay, maybe Yumi is a, okay. Or Wani, share. Hi. Uh -huh. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Yeah. Um. Can you guys see me? 
No, not yet. Okay, now we see you. Amazing. Yeah. Aloha everyone. I'm Wani. Uh, my name is Cik Hazwani. You can just call me Wani. I'm from Malaysia. Uh, of, of course, G19. Same with Christina and Ariana and also Yumi. Uh, right now, I'm based in uh, Putrajaya, Federal Territory Putrajaya in Malaysia. I work in the Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia. So I'm happy to see actually just now we have the new cohort. So one of the cohort, which is Fadila, uh, she's the one that I personally uh, encouraged to join uh, APLP and I'm happy oh. that she joined APLP. So uh, I hope there is some kind of contribution, small contribution from me for the APLP <laughs> generations. Amazing. So hi, uh, everyone. Um, it's nice to meet all of you. Uh, some of them, uh, some of you are a familiar face, but some of you, uh, we still have a lot of work to do in terms of, you know, uh, knowing each other. Okay, that's all. No, mahalo, Wani. Mahalo. Yeah. Okay, so... Blaine, would you like to share a bit about what you're doing now and how's the weather there in Hawaii? And what time is it in Hawaii? Must be like late. Uh, thanks. Um, so it is what about twelve thirty probably here, and the after midnight, and uh, well, our temperature is like fifty degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure what that is Celsius, but maybe twelve or so, and we're experiencing northern lights. So wow. that's odd wow. for wow. southern southern Ohio, but um, about right now we've got some cloud cover, so I'm here instead. So we, I went out with my son, and we tried to see it last thirty minutes or so. But um, there are people in the area that have seen it um, earlier, and yeah, I'm just uh, glad to be here and see everybody, and look forward to this. Mahalo, Blaine. Mahalo. And right now, as far as professionally, I'm in transition since I left Laos and came to America. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for, for joining us. And it's good to see you again, Ben. It's been, yep. it's been a while. All right. So we are, Scott, are you otherwise busy or you can introduce yourself apart from uh, your No, oh, yeah, I'm here. Um, right. Yeah, I introduced quickly uh, Scott Coates, G11, originally from Canada living in Bangkok, sweating from the heat like everyone else uh, the last <laughs> month, I'd say, and looking forward to the rains, as someone also stated. I guess I also used to be on the APLP board for six years. I sort of uh, re remembered and served as vice president under the leadership of Lane and also was a board member when Maloney was the president. So thanks Yay. to all for organizing this. Wow. So virtually meet a lot of new people. Amazing. Thank you so much, Scott. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Director CG, uh, Director CM. <laughs> Aloha. Sorry. Hi. I'm calling me home. I've been listening to everything, but I didn't want to turn my camera on. <laughs> That's, I give everybody vertigo, but. Um, I think she froze. Yeah, I think it's yeah, all for you here in a minute. So happy to be part of this. Same here. <laughs> Thank you, Director CM. You froze a bit and then you came back. But yeah, we, we can see you now. So thank you so much for being here. Send our regards to Lance. <laughs> Lance boy. All right. Okay. So who else? Who else has? Okay. Are you done with your introduction? Or would you like to share what you do? I think I have already shared my introduction. I am. Okay. Yeah. Shashank. So, uh, Shashank, are you here? And then afterwards, Marufa, the host class for today's Pamana. Shashank. Hi, Shashank. I, I already talked about. Okay. Oh yeah, Thanks. yes, Shashank. Shashank already did. Okay. So I think uh Marufa. Hi, thank you. I don't know how I become host. <laughs> oh <laughs> G13. G13. Yeah. Um thank you. It really feels amazing to see everyone. 
I am generation 13. My name is Marufa Akhtar Bhuya. I'm originally from Bangladesh. Um, I lived in Hawaii for, uh, after I finished FNLP, I loved Hawaii so much. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone. You didn't I leave? Asked, and then I applied at the University of Hawaii. I was visiting scholar for a few years. Then I tried like second master's in engineering. And then I started a company named Everest Innovation Lab. And it's a Hawaii based, we do uh, like several projects like astronaut training program, but basically young generation, the like current generation, like education and all this. Right now I am in this analog astronaut conference and we are basically talking about moon and Mars <laughs> weather, <laughs> but um, earth weather also looks great. Here the sky is so clean. It's in the middle of the desert. You can see the plane flies. Wow. It leaves like a trail. It's like, it looks like a comet. Wow. Wow. And, and then meeting with all these people, they're like so inspiring. And some of them are so young and so much achieved. Um, yeah. So, but I'm so sad that none of my <laughs> generation member is here. Maybe I was not very good at like uh, publicity. They're busy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm happy to be here. Thanks. Nice to meet you all. Same yeah. here. Thank you. Thank you, Marufa. Welcome. Okay. All right. So I think at this time we can is there anyone else who would whom I missed? Aloha everyone and Elizabeth Marder. <laughs> I am from the Philippines. I am from the Philippines again and very sunny. Uh here at, I'm at the National Capital Region. I am working at the National Anti-Poverty Commission, Office of the President, and I've been involved in the development work and also as the head of policy. Uh, and so anything that, and everything that has to do with uh, poverty alleviation and development uh, for legislative work that basically falls on my table. And I am currently the president of the APLP alumni chapter. And uh, I've I'm basically joined by wonderful, amazing, energetic people. That's why we are basically able to hold and host a lot of activities since we uh, were sworn in just the uh, last, I think that was December, yeah, or January, uh, sometime, uh, sometime along that. Uh, in February, February. Okay, officially installed. We had our oh, yeah, game just last uh, February, and it's really, it's been a wonderful a uh, few months and uh, yeah so we are very energized uh, to keep the Ohana uh, as engaged as possible and together as one uh, united family uh, wherever in the world we are okay so thank you and uh, I think we can already well go to the second slide we would just like to take this opportunity to also inform everyone that we will be having the international leadership colloquium or the ILC uh, as we call it, and uh, also in keeping with the 64th anniversary of the East West Center, the theme essentially is countries at risk, resilient and sustainable Philippines and its climate change. It's going to happen on May 14, Asia Manila time. So for those in the US and Hawaii, uh, that's going to be the 15th, well, no, the 13th, uh, wherever you are, uh, you can check out the time converter. Uh, mm -hmm. also shown, and we've already distributed this. We already sent an announcement, an email for this, uh, both an email and uh, social media. And uh, we are very fortunate to be joined by Dr. Emma Porio. Since this is, the focus is the Philippines, where we are and where we are from, some of us at the moment. So we will be joined in by one of the leading scientists and also uh, an alumna of the ISRO Center, uh, I think, 1983 sociology. Uh, so that's uh, Dr. Emma Porio. She's currently a professor at the Ateneo de Manila University and also a science research fellow at the Manila Observatory. And also joining us is from our very own Messiah State University. I'm adopted by Batch 87. Yes. Same batch as uh, Dr. Gabrilo. So we have Joe B. Tuyor. He's the lead environmental specialist at the World Bank. Uh, and uh, 
She's been with the World Bank for a long time. So they are the key speakers uh, for the ILC, the second ILC. And hosting the ILC uh, are Ariana from G19 and also wow. on Kids. G twenty one, and we wow. are also yeah. We still have uh, we still have to continue our discussion, Blaine. Uh, so we can all join in uh for the second uh, international leadership tour here happening again on May fourteen Asia Manila time, and May thirteen for those in the U S. Uh and um uh, and ah uh, okay, so let's uh zero in on talking resilience at sixty four. So we have this package that was shared with us by the East West Center and I would like to okay I'll be sharing the uh, message of our very own just have to make sure that everything is working okay share sound happy East West Center day I'm so excited to celebrate East West Center Day with all of you. This year, we are celebrating our 64th anniversary, and we're so excited to welcome our alumni and share excitement and seeing all of you gather and celebrate East West Center Day. The Office of the Alumni Engagement is offering a learning kit to celebrate this occasion. And here's just a real quick short summary of the package. This year's discussion topic is on community-based climate resilience. And it's really based on a project run by East West Center's very own researchers, funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. And we're excited to engage directly in the climate change field with our own expertise and research. So the Rockefeller Project is a special one for us at East West Center. We're super excited to be partnering with the Rockefeller Foundation. And our first climate partnership and experience was held in Chiang Mai and where many, many Southeast Asian and South Asian community leaders who are active in climate and climate resilience and sustainability were able to meet in Chiang Mai and gathered together and interviewed farmers on the ground along the Mekong right there in Chiang Mai. And that was our first convening. Our second convening will happen in Makassar where our researchers as well as the other community leaders from Southeast Asia and South Asia will hear about the issues going on, not only in their countries, but right on the ground in Makassar. And you'll have a chance to hear more about it on our May 14th research speaker series um, after they return from Makassar. So thank you again to all of our chapter leaders and our liaisons and key leaders around the world. We hope that you enjoy your time together and we're excited to hear back about the amazing conversations that you will have and we look forward to seeing what you talk about and share your experiences with us. So thank you so much and aloha from the East West Center. All right, so there you have it. So that is- Happy East West- Okay, so again, they're talking resilience at 64. I understand we have Micah Fisher, Sandeep Kanvi Kupa and Ming Le Yong. And uh, let, let's pause for a moment to listen to what they have to say. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Micah Fisher. I'm a research fellow at the East West Center. I work on environment and governance issues, mostly in Southeast Asia. I'm really excited to welcome you all today, alumni chapters around the world, um, at a special feature of our 64th um, birthday. And today we'll be talking about some of our work um, on climate change issues, working with communities uh, across the Asia Pacific region. I'm a research fellow at the West Center, uh, and yeah, we're really excited to share more about this with you. Aloha, East West Center family. I am Sandeep, and uh, I work as a research fellow here at the East West Center. Much of my work is centered on natural resources and uh, livelihoods, especially in the context of rural South Asia, and we are really looking forward to having this conversation with uh, with each other. All right, so first we wanna talk a little bit about how we formulated this initiative and what we've been doing. Um, we 
Uh, I've been working with the Rockefeller Foundation. It's uh, about a year-long project. It takes place over two convenings, and uh, we've been able to convene uh, community networks from several different countries, from India, from Bangladesh, from Myanmar, Cambodia, Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia. And we are really centered around questions about these climate issues or global issues, but how do communities um, experience them? And how can we better work with communities to prepare uh, for environmental solutions, looking to the future uh, to address these really, really challenging issues? All right, so I think the idea was that um, a lot of decision making over climate policies um, or concerns over climate change, um, you know, a lot of these conversations take place at very high level. So say between governments or very high level meetings like COP and uh, because all of us work very closely with communities in our research. So um, we were thinking, you know, what are communities actual perceptions about climate change? Um, how do they see themselves in terms of how they're experiencing it? Is it your you know, biggest concern? Um, and you know what are they doing with their communities to try to influence this or you know is there any way in which they can try to influence these decision making processes um, around climate change so uh that's kind of why we were adopting this bottom-up approach and trying to bring our partners who work very closely with communities um, on the ground um, to talk through these issues uh, our attempt was also to try and situate climate change within uh, the larger uh, social, economic, and political context that prevails in each of the regions where we work. Uh, more often than not, we find that uh, discussions around climate change are uh, uh, somewhat detached from these contextual realities. And through our engagements with our partners and uh, through uh, by bringing in a little bit of our own experience of working on this uh, topic, uh, we were hoping to try and uh, build these, uh, bridge these gaps, and hence uh, the title "Building Bridges." Uh, that's also one of the reasons why we went with that title for our project. So, the "Building Bridges for Community-Centered Climate Resilience" is an initiative that really weaves together some of our long-standing partnerships. My work has focused on Indonesia. Uh, and the communities that we're working with are in Sulawesi. These are places that um, are facing new challenges in agriculture, different cultivation challenges that uh, they're dealing with. Um, there are also issues of forestry, um, issues of water and watersheds. Um, and really try, and, and my research is really focused on trying to understand how communities are, are changing, how, how they're developing new strategies to address some of these challenges. Yeah, um, so my research really revolves around transboundary water governance in the Mekong region. Um, and so for this project, I'm bringing together, uh, you know, members of the communities uh, or civil society members or um, researchers who have been living and studying uh, the Mekong River, uh, um, you know, for the longest time. And it's a really interesting uh, dilemma that's coming out of the region because, um, you know, with climate change, there's been a lot of focus on finding kind of renewable energy options um, to meet energy demand. And this is manifesting in the form of hydropower development along the Mekong River. So even though it's a form of renewable energy, it's actually causing a lot of um, Kind of devastating impacts uh, across the river basin to multiple countries in terms of affecting the water flows, the hydrological cycles, uh, the food security of the region, and also like sediment flow um, along the river. So all these community members that I'm working with, um, you know, some of them have been personally impacted by these changes to the river, which have also uh, had impacts on their livelihoods. Um, and so they are quite concerned with, you know, how climate change is going to be an additional layer of uh, um, threat that uh, their communities have to deal with in the future. Uh, much of my work uh, uh, 
has revolved around working uh, uh, around common pool resources. So throughout my professional life, I have engaged with uh, rural communities uh, in understanding how they come up with institutional arrangements, formal and informal, in order to manage uh, shared uh, natural resources, whether it be uh, grazing lands or forests or uh, surface and subsurface water resources. And uh, my experience has been that uh, provided the right kind of uh, policy uh, backing, communities can and often do coalesce uh, to uh, identify uh, the ideal, uh, identify ways to manage resources in a way that is uh, reasonably equitable and uh, uh, and that ensures that the benefits are uh, reasonably distributed across uh, different uh, social social economic segments. Uh, so, piggybacking of uh, this experience, uh, I tried to uh, work with uh, a very important uh, and a, 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 a major uh, environmental nonprofit in India called the Foundation for Ecological Security. So, we partnered with them as part of the project that we are currently talking about to uh, bring uh, community level leaders uh, who are actively engaged in uh, thinking about uh, managing common pool resources. Uh, and a commons perspective is also important when we are talking about climate because I mean, if you look at it and uh, look at seen, from, seen through a certain lens, climate is also a common uh, resource. Uh, the dilemmas that we face while man managing common pool resources are similar to the dilemmas that communities face when um, uh, when trying to manage shared natural resources. Uh, so there are a lot of, uh, and especially when we are looking at bottom-up management of uh, or bottom-up uh, solutions to climate adapt uh, cli uh, climate adaptation and uh, finding ways to uh, improve climate resilience then uh, taking a commons approach can really help us in uh, uh, in confronting these dilemmas uh, and maybe even uh, thinking through them uh, and getting to a point where we can start talking about solutions. So as you can see, uh, when we started uh, working at the East-West Center and trying to formulate uh, different initiatives that built uh, the strategic plans of the East-West Center, uh, specifically around environmental solutions, specifically around good governance, as well as training the future leaders uh, of the region. Uh, we were really interested in trying to understand what connects us across these very different geographies. So we have South Asia, we have the mainland Southeast Asia, the Mekong region, we have island Southeast Asia, Indonesia, and, and elsewhere. And really trying to understand this moment that we're living in where there's so much interest in trying to develop climate solutions. What do communities have to say about these issues and how can we better tease out what the themes uh, might be? And so our approach was, you know, bring our networks together. And we're fortunate to be supported by the Rockefeller Foundation to do this. We have an approach that has two convenings. So the first convening uh, took place last year um, in the fall in September, we convened in Chiang Mai, uh, Thailand. And that was really a chance to get to know each other, to really understand what the themes are uh, that these communities are facing, what are the similarities, the differences, right? The climates, the, the, the political context are very different from these places, but what can we learn about climate change from these different geographies and, and contexts? And we brought together about 45 people, um, and it was a real mixture of you know, people from the community. It was people who work in bridging institutions like activist organizations. It was people who work in local universities or in, in government offices, um, but really highlighting how uh, people uh, come to learn about the issues as well as how they then um, develop some sort of collective action and what, what to do about those issues. And I think uh, we learned some really uh, profound sort of things uh, in this first convening in Chiang Mai, and we'll talk through six or seven of those themes um, in this discussion. And uh, what, what's really great at this moment, actually, is we're preparing for the second convening, which will take place in South Sulawesi, Indonesia. Um, it's just gonna happen next week, so we're really excited to learn. 
and what these communities that we've been working with at this time, they've been uh, working on projects. So at the end of the first convening, we identified what the themes were and based on those themes, each of these uh, country teams were gonna go back to uh, their communities and, and, and conduct a different project. So each of the projects that the teams uh, uh, were working on um, were very different. So in Indonesia, we had a group that's working on participatory uh, uh, documentary filmmaking. So what they really wanted to do was show the process to the other country teams. So they're in the process right now of developing a documentary <laughs> that's based on um, how they advocate for climate solutions. And we're really looking forward to, to seeing what, what, what they're doing. And the Mekong region and the teams from South Asia have, have their own uh, projects that they're currently working on. Yeah, I, uh, the Indian uh, projects kind of uh, branch or, you know, ended up having two distinct uh, branches to them. So uh, the Indian team uh, that attended the workshop in Chiang Mai comprised uh, two distinct groups. One uh, was working uh, in semi-arid regions. Uh, these are uh, dry land uh, uh, parts of the country, uh, and they were interested in working in uh, river and ecosystems. The other uh, came from the more subhumid parts of central India. Uh, these are the more uh, places with more, uh, you know, the densely forested parts of India, and uh, they for. Hi, Elizabeth, we can't hear you. Your mic is. Exactly. Thank you so much for reminding me, uh, Anke. Yeah, so we already sent the link for that talk. I understand it's, it's actually quite long. So perhaps for this for this moment, we can share what are our thoughts. Okay, thank you so much, Director Siam, because I couldn't download it and I had to rely on the Canva. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing this. So perhaps we can take this time uh, to share uh, if the points that they raise resonate, what are our thoughts about the uh, topic, and uh, just please anyone, the, the floor is open to anyone who would like to share your thoughts, your insights, uh, what are your, some of the, you know, the things that you see happening in your respective local or res respective countries. We have the Philippines in focus on the 14 here in Asia Manila time. And we're very much interested to hear what you have to say about that, especially we have uh, climate warriors, scientists here, uh, experts in the field uh, like Ora. Uh, President, oh, sorry, guys. I think there were, we, we don't necessarily need them, but I think there were some discussion questions on the that next slide to guide, um, if those are helpful. But I think that's what was for shy group. This group, this group isn't very shy. So I think it was essentially about, <laughs> you know, what local initiatives around climate change and, right. um, you can read more. You can hear the rest of that talk. It's actually quite long. It ended up being like 45 minutes, which was too long. But, right. um, and to see how, you know, if chapters or individuals and alumni want to connect with those initiatives, but also just to hear what you see is working, you know, mm -hmm. below this sub-national level and to have a conversation. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Director Siam. So we already flashed the discussion questions. So among which are what are the ways in which climate change is climate change is impacting on the environment, natural resources, and livelihoods in your respective areas? And what lessons do you think we can learn from local and indigenous communities in stewarding the Earth's natural resources? In, and the third, in what ways do you think policy making around climate change can be more responsive to and inclusive of frontline community voices? So these are among the questions that we hope to center in uh, for this afternoon in South Ohana. So anyone? Yes, Daya, you're recognized. Yeah, um, 
Hi. So one of the important uh, issues, I mean, from my perspective that I've been talking for the last couple of years and uh, we have something big coming up later this year is uh, the intersection of climate and health. Right. And that is something uh, I did not hear the word health at all in the last several minutes of our conversation. But um, considering the communities that we're working with, um, just even within uh, India or uh, in uh, South America and so on, the uh, the impact is very real, right? Year on year, throughout the year, we're seeing so much uh, happening due to just, just now, for example, Bangalore went through a terrible heat wave. Uh, India is going through that phase, right? Um, there are communities, for example, in the Northeast where we work, uh, where uh, flooding is a constant issue, right? Every year, uh, they have a fixed period where there is flooding and most of the time they are uh, struggling to figure out okay what is going to be the effect next year how much uh, which is going to be the highest point where i can preserve my uh, my most uh, important uh, things my uh, livestock what am i going to lose this year and then post uh, during the flooding obviously they're in stress and then post the flooding they are just recuperating and the cycle goes on and on. And one of the conversations I've been having in the last uh, couple of uh, years is uh, with think, think tanks on use of technology and AI and you know prediction and so on. There is a lot of uh, conversation. There's a lot of uh, um, academic bench work that's happening saying, hey, we can predict uh, all kinds of disasters. We can predict accurately uh, what is when it's going to rain, when it's going to flood. But what are we doing with that information? Because... At the end of the day, the communities who need this information the most are not getting it, right? And are still suffering, right? So how, uh, so one of the biggest issues is all these uh, conversations that we are having, all the technology that we are developing um, with AI and uh, other, you know, satellite uh, information and data, how can we translate that into actual impact to the communities that are being affected right and that is something um for me most important thing is application um right so that is a there is a break in that space um then not many people who are actually affected involved in this conversation or even participating in these conversations are aware of all the developments and things that are happening so to this effect uh, later this year we are envisioning a sustainability conference uh, the intersection of climate and health, where we're inviting um, community members, nonprofits, people uh, at the ground level who are facing these challenges to come interact with technologists, startups, innovations, academics, experts who have solutions, who have uh, a, you know a breakthroughs that can actually then be. Uh, bridge marriage to each marry to each other so that these solutions can become applicable and there's opportunities to engage with each other right so um, my biggest concern is in terms of health uh, there is not there is some conversation but there is not really much focus on um, how do we keep these uh, interconnections and have these uh, uh, collaborative conversations uh, which are most important right so that is um, what I want to uh, bring up and hear thoughts from from oh. people in, in the room. Thank you so much, Daya. Yes, I, I would like to share after that okay, um, Maruka, talk. Of course. Um, I'm just thinking um, when I was in APLP, we had to submit like, a, I don't know, it was after we get into APLP or before <laughs> we had to submit like 10 years future plan to Christina yes. Monroe. And I remember <laughs> all my projects were like climate change, oh, yeah. renewable energy, green jobs, and people are underwater because I'm from Bangladesh. So we have all these issues very prominent. Coming to Hawaii, I kind of opened my eyes in different perspective. Like we have water here too. And it's a very intricate system here in Hawaii. And then now I find myself working in space industry so I think all these are interconnected and leadership is very important. And we all are kind of leadership, part of the leadership program. Um, and timing is crucial. It's already now, like, I think we're two minutes over. But um, also I had a plan like, oh, I want to have like a 
husband and a dog and two children <laughs> within 10 years. But I have a dog and husband, but no children. So a lot of things can change, but um, I think we have to always like um, be thankful and understand the perspective and always there is like, a, where there is a will, there is a way, <laughs> this kind of thing. But yeah, thank, I'm just getting emotional sharing my past experience, but I'm just thankful to be here. Thank you so much, Marupa. So, Shashank, perhaps you would like to share uh, what you're doing uh, in connection with today's theme. Hello. Uh, yes, I can. I can. I can provide some insights. You know what is happening here in Myanmar, and uh, most of you are already aware about the political situation in Myanmar since the February 2021, where the uh, military, uh, you know, has taken over, you know, uh, the civilian government and there is there is no rule of law, you can say, in the country. The country is under the intense fighting. Uh, since the COVID and then with the conflict here in the country, uh, widespread civil war kind of situation, you know, the, the issues related to climate change has really gone down, almost forgotten. And uh, uh, while there is a blurred picture, you know, how this conflict, uh, the dual impact of the conflict and climate change is happening on the communities, but that is one thing is sure that uh, when there are more than 3 million people who are internally displaced within Myanmar and almost 1.3 million people from Myanmar who has been driven out of the country, you can see as a forced migration because of the conflict, the climate change is also is like exaggerating the 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 situation you know of the the communities who are already you know deprived of the basic thing uh basic um, violation of human rights uh, uh including the lack of basic services they are running you know from pillar to post to find the assistance uh, uh in the last uh, and there has been quite a vacuum in myanmar uh, where the communities are deeply impacted and the last year cyclone mocha which came in the month of may in uh, may 2023 in 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 myanmar that has clearly demonstrated uh, that when there are the weak institutional uh, capacities, there is no governance, uh, there are lack of support from the government counterpart, how and how it can create the havoc by knowing that, you know, the international community is also not provided access to the deeply impacted areas. Uh, so what we have been doing in Myanmar, uh, in the lack of, you know, the government engagement, we have been uh, bringing the non-state climate actors together uh, to build the community resilience uh, for the climate change. In Myanmar, we have taken a, a step where we created a Myanmar Climate Action Network. Uh, in Myanmar, uh, a year before, and now there are more than 60 international and national uh, organizations, UN agencies, INGOs, uh, local CSOs, NGOs, who are coming together to discuss and address on the urgent climate issues in Myanmar. And uh, in the last six months, eight months, I have been more, you know, looking the issues, you know, on the conflict and climate change together and trying to advocate these issues because of the lack of engagement from the Myanmar in the last two years, you know, because there is no uh, acknowledgement of the authorities in the international community, we have been addressing these issues more uh, strongly so that there are the voices from the communities uh, in the international forum. Uh, we are bringing these issues, you know, this year to the World Abnel Forum in Cairo talking on the uh, on the conflict uh, and the climate change dual impact, you know, on the urban communities, there is a lot of rural urban migration, the communities who are driven from the rural areas, they are settling down in the informal settlement, you know, in the peri-urban uh, areas of the city and their lack of basic services and all, and also the security threat. Uh, so we are bringing these issues on the international forum, supporting the communities, the local CSOs from here, you know, bringing them, supporting them, you know, to raise their voices. Uh, uh, I'm chairing the Myanmar Climate Action Network since last one year, uh, and uh, there are 100 plus members right now, 60 plus, odd, uh, you know, organization, and there are 40 plus individual members who are active on the Myanmar issues uh, from the country and also from the other institute like uh, SIPRI in uh, Sweden and the DIIA, Danish Institute of International Affairs. So a lot of, you know, the regional international collaboration also we are looking on to that. But I think, you know, uh, while listening, you know, the project, you know, from the from the uh, East West Center uh, uh, in collaboration with the Rockefeller Foundation, I think, you know, what uh, Sandeep was talking, you know, is I think uh, sometimes, you know, 
uh, we are talking about the climate change solution, but they are not real, really in the context of the uh, the political situation, you know, the socio-economic situation of the country. I think we need to think about how can really we push the climate action as also as entry point to build the peace and harmony in the in the conflict affected countries where the there has been less funding, less uh, focus even by the donor bodies. So I think there's a lot more pushes needed, you know, in the communities which are impacted both by the climate change and the conflict. And they have, literally, they have uh, very, very few resources and uh, support uh, from the international community and also from the local authorities, I mean, the national counterparts also. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shashank. Those are really a wonderful. You just took us on a deep dive on uh, you know, uh, climate change and uh, adaptation uh, and other uh, mechanisms that you're having there in your country. And uh, yeah, we would like to engage you more. Uh, and we also hope to see you. Uh, we hope you can join us in the ILC, the second ILC on May 14. So we'll be sending out an invitation again from HIT uh, for your generation. Thank you so much. Okay, I think thank I would you. like to, thank you, Shashank, yeah. Uh, so I'm coming in from the Philippines. So uh, if you are aware, the Philippines just stopped the natural in, in terms of the the global uh, survey uh, for the highest and the the country that is most prone uh, to natural disasters. Uh, Philippines is number one, and uh, along with it, you know, we're talking about what is that? What are some of the impacts that we see now? Uh, we see the Philippines is very prone to natural disaster. We're also have, we also have uh, you know human induced disasters, and so a lot of the people uh, we are looking at a massive uh, uh, a lot of group of people affected, and they become internally displaced persons. And uh, you know, uh, being an IDP is something that can happen to anyone. Basically, equalizes anyone uh, in the when we're faced by disasters, whether it's natural hazard or uh, human induced. And uh, so, of course, uh, being an IDP, it basically affects the entire community, your, your entire lives. All of a sudden, you are left with nothing. So, some of the lessons that we can draw from indigenous. Uh, as an indigenous person myself, uh, there has been at the natural level, also subnational levels, uh, in policy uh, making and formulation of policies, and also in crafting uh, local development plans. We are really looking at the, you know, at the indigenous ways, the indigenous knowledge systems and practices, and we acknowledge that the indigenous peoples or the indigenous cultural communities, especially the wealth of knowledge and the systems, uh, the sustainable practices that they have. Uh, of course, in uh, stewarding and safeguarding the natural resources here uh, in the Philippines. So in terms of the policy making uh, around climate change, one of the um, legislative measures that we, I myself is ad actively advocating for uh, is a Magna Carta for the public uh, disaster risk reduction uh, uh, workers, uh, those who are really uh, the front runners uh, in in any case that a disaster basically happens uh, at the local level. And uh, we really want them to, their rights, especially in their welfare to be protected and also for them uh, to have the benefits that is afforded uh, to, uh, you know, us who are working in the government as career professionals. So as far as the Philippines is concerned. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to share uh, any thoughts, any final thoughts? It's already 1-11. Yeah. Yeah. Aura? Or Dani? Or Sana? I would request Dani, my friend from uh, who's working with OIDP in Istanbul. To share his work, he is working a lot on you know peace building, and uh, yeah, earlier he was working with U UNESCO in India, and that that time as well his work was too much related with the peace building with youth in Indian community. Hi, Dani. Oh well, uh, thank you, Ankit, for that. Uh, probably I will not uh, be able to share much uh, because my area is more like uh, on the peace building, uh, conflict prevention, uh, that kind of a thing. Um, relating to climate change, um, I would like to add uh, there is an issue of um, climate peace security now, something that uh, probably uh, 
uh, we can uh, try also to consider how is the connection of uh, climate change uh, with the uh, of violence um, in the ground, uh, including uh, relating to human migration, for example. And then the second one is that uh, in the area of uh, education is that um, how people can be more aware of um, of this problem. Um, and the experience that I work uh, with UNESCO Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Education and, um, and uh, for peace and sustainable development is that uh, the emotion or cognitive, uh, non-cognitive aspect uh, can be very, very useful in understanding uh, this matter. It includes, uh, let's say, how we can be mindful uh, with the impact of, um, of uh, human activities uh, to the planet. So uh, we formulate uh, what so-called social learning. Uh, that's something uh, really interesting to see um, in terms of uh, how uh, we revolutionize uh, the education system. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. So, is there anyone else who would like to share? Uh, uh, yes, Madam, yeah. Madam President, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. I'm in beachwear here, huh? but wanted to share the sunset with you. Um, yeah, I, I guess I wanted to frame because it's absolutely happening organically as we hoped. Um, there's been a proposal from the Mumbai East West Center chapter, which is one of 53 chapters, as you know, you, APLP being a, a, one of the non-geographic chapters and the most active chapters, to, to collaborate with other experts and invested people within climate change and do a project, a base, I would call it a baseline project where people are articulating the, in their communities at a very local level what's happening. Um, many of our Mumbai chapter leaders are older. They grew up in Mumbai. They can see the changes. They want to document, share those stories, and talk about um, what's what's working. And I, what I love, and it's very APLPS, is just that underdog um, belief in the underdog, like the investment in the stories at the local level and how we can support, how we can amplify, how we can provide resources. So I just want to take that as, um, this is an EWC celebration. We created that package to kind of help you hear what's happening at the center. You can hear more, but it was really to augment um, how we might work together as alumni and chapters and, and do something together. I don't know what that is, but for those of you interested, um, you're already doing the work. I would just like to um, come together maybe in a meaningful way and amplify it. So hopefully that's not too vague, but looking forward to next steps. <laughs> really great to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much, Director Siang. Uh, so, okay. So Marufa, uh, I think it's, a, it's already 1.15. Uh, in the afternoon, and uh, it's also getting late in other parts for, for those of us who are in the Western Hemisphere. So, Marufa, maybe please request that you share with us a few uh, words of gratitude uh, just to wrap up uh, the, today's uh, event. Mahalo. Yes, um, I think everyone is unique, and when we listen closely, we can, of course, learn. learn uh, but main thing is like uh, gratitude is important. So of course, compassion is important and being in a leadership role is hard. Like I go judging all these projects, student projects, and I look at the student faces. They're all so beautiful, so hard to judge. But um, that that's if, if you have to do, you have to do. So I think um, East West Center is a, like one of the greatest unique platform in the world, I would say, and it's bringing us together. I love attending the seminars and conferences. And this is, of course, a great opportunity for us that we are meeting here. But I would like we meet more often in the board meetings and share, just share what we are doing. Uh, and that helps. We can always learn from each other. And thank you. I hope to see you again. Oh, uh, Elizabeth left and she left a message that I am the host. So, yeah, yeah. I'm sending greetings from the moon, I guess, because we are doing like a simulation of moon. 
kind of wow. like how the life is on the moon and it's like so surreal experience um but climate change is real of course um we have documents we have billion dollar funding no one can deny it's not real uh and then just doing the best we can and compassion is important i remember when we did like maui wildfire and it's on the record we did the best we could we volunteer for american red cross but one of the top person she says oh we didn't do enough compassion was not enough and then i was thinking i can serve my own country and help thousands of people i can mentor but i think there will be always someone will make a comment from their perspective but there are always other perspective too and as long as we have a true heart and that helps um, like being true to yourself then we can always be true to others um and uh, staying organized also helps like for me i like to stay organized and putting the meetings in my calendar writing notes these are just a few practices i like it very much just like writing things down because also sometimes I notice like overbooking, like I have this meeting, that meeting, then I have to like prioritize, like priority also important, like when you were in a leadership role. Mm, yeah, but sometimes you could be biased towards our own culture, our race <laughs> and gender, even though we don't realize it. Um, uh, and then also personality is important when you are in leadership. Um, like positivity really helps but then balance is the key like sometimes probably a little bit negative is okay i mean but then positivity really helps um to uplift others because i'm sure we are like very privileged people to be here not all of all the people are privileged so our role is basically probably inspiring people to be like us a kind of like role model thank you Wow, that was so inspiring. <laughs> Marufa, thank you so much. Oh, Elizabeth is not yet here. She's up. Yeah, she left. She said, I'm the host and we wrap up. So her battery uh, died. All right, all right. But I like Elizabeth's talking. She's so formal. Yeah. <laughs> I love listening to her host. It's really cool. <laughs> Blaine, could we have one like, uh, wisdom from you being the award-winning APLP president. <laughs> like just, uh, it's one twenty in the morning, so uh, I don't know if I'll have oh, too much sorry. wisdom for everybody. <laughs> but, but no, I I, I do uh, want to encourage everybody to um, continue uh, this uh, communication, and I look, I've enjoyed uh, Elizabeth and her board members with this new. Um, board and Thank look you. forward to the future events that they're having and uh it looks like i'll be part of the uh next event on may 13th and 14th so yeah Thank maybe i'll so. see some of you guys then thank you so back to you marofa <laughs> what do i do now <laughs> just say goodbye <laughs> say goodbye or yeah, yeah. Uh, about Christina Monroe. Yeah, Christina Monroe. Anything Bye, that you Aloha would like to say? Please, Christina, say something. <laughs> it seems like someone just needs to say aloha. Ahuiho. <laughs> good night. Good morning. Have a good rest of the day. <laughs> this has yeah. been delightful. Thank you so much, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Enjoy that Thank sunset. You. You know what? <laughs> Yeah, so beautiful. It was Love more you. fun with you all. Yeah. <laughs> Aloha. It's Aloha. Really Aloha we are one family of Eden. Have a great weekend. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Good. See you guys. See you. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Bye. Bye for now. Bye. Bye, Bye. <laughs> Bye for now. So just um Let's end this maybe here. Yeah. So I'll just end this. See you. Thank you. I like your initial Thanks CG. You. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. So See there you. will not be mistaken by Christina Monroe. So say Christina, then I will also, you know. Yeah. So CG and CM for Christina. Yeah, I missed yesterday's meeting. 
Uh, yeah, that was it's a okay. panel. Yeah, but I hope yeah. you will join the next next meeting. Yeah, hopefully. Take care. Bye. Love you. Bye. Congrats. Love you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Take care as host. Yeah. You're Bye. Welcome. Bye. How do you end this?